Welcome everybody to episode 39 of The Cover 2 presented by Tiger Vision. I'm Patrick Neal with Grayson Mann. As always, um, we have a special guest today. Uh, welcoming to the show our second ever guest, Mr. Darian Richardson. Thank you. Thank you for letting me on here. Appreciate it. Campus, yeah. Clemson campus legend. Yeah, I, <laughs> if, if you go to Clemson, you got to know who Darian is. Um, you probably do though by now. Yeah, but um, yeah, so second second ever guest uh so you know not too many expectations yet so well, that's um, good hopefully i don't let you down yeah then. yeah uh, <laughs> i hopefully hopefully I, I think it'll be a great show but anyways trade deadline ended uh, about an hour ago for the nfl so you know i i see no reason in in waste any more time um where are we where are we starting bradley chubb i think I, Perhaps I, the biggest deal of the day. I think, yeah, Bradley Chubb, it's another third, another team with a third-year quarterback, and I think that right now they believe Tua is their guy. He's played really well this year. They're just continuing to go all in. They got Tyreek in the offseason. They got Bradley Chubb. Mike McDaniel doesn't want those draft picks. He wants, as Jameis said, he wants to eat those Ws. Yeah. And they're doing so in a big way. He, um, he got traded to the Dolphins for uh, 2023 first, a 2024 fifth and Chase Edmonds as well so um, yeah I, it's really interesting this season I don't think has gone the way the Broncos have wanted it to no, uh, to say not the at least. all <laughs> but um, you know there were rumors that Bradley Chubb was going to get traded and and it happened today so it's I, I, I don't know Darren what are your thoughts on it I was not very shocked I think the Broncos are you know going through something right now that they just they're going through a struggle right now. Hopefully, um, the Let's Ride train, train can go start again. Let's hope so after a win, finally. Um, Russell Wilson has been the biggest letdown this year by far yep. with the amount of weapons he's had. But I think the Dolphins are getting someone really special, and I think they're going to be good again. Mm -hmm. well, yeah. They're already good, but you, even better. You could yeah. argue that if Tua didn't have the concussion against Cincinnati, that they probably would be sitting at the top of the AFC. Yeah. It's just the way they were rolling and moving the ball. Tua was in a rhythm. Proven, uh, this is a team that gets, gets more and more complete as you continue to watch them. And uh, it's an AFC East uh, participate, participant. It's not very fun to see. Yeah. Uh, Miami, <laughs> Miami was near the, the bottom of the league in, you know, pretty much every defensive pressure statistic, you know, pressure rate, um, QB knockdown rate, sack rate, all of that. They were near the bottom of the league. And Bradley Chubb is very, very good at doing exactly those things so they get exactly what they need um and they get rid of chase edmonds i mean he he was productive in arizona last year mm -hmm. so you know maybe maybe the broncos can get some use out of him because they have been kind of struggling a little bit with running back uh with javante williams going down but yeah it's just a little unfortunate for the broncos i think that this season has not gone the way they wanted but chase edmonds can now watch russell wilson do high knees on the plan <laughs> yeah so exactly that I'm works sure. out for them but I'm another sure. another big move um i think we're seeing the Bears, second round pick for Chase Claypool. Uh, depending on how you feel about Claypool, that's another receiver though. The Bears, definitely it was a position of need. They get a second round pick for it. Doesn't look as good with trading a second for Rope or getting, I don't know the specifics of the trade, but Roquan Smith was dealt with a second round pick. He, yes. he, was, he was dealt for a second rounder and a fifth rounder. So mm -hmm. basically you're, you're swapping Roquan Smith for Claypool and a fifth, which is kind of eh. Depends um, on it. Maybe Justin Fields can no longer throw the ball just five times the second quarter. He can throw it ten times now. Oh, Ooh. I do not think Chase Claypool. I think the Bears won this trade by, um, not the Bears, the Steelers won this trade by a landslide uh, because Chase Claypool, no disrespect, is one of the worst receivers this year. Oh. <laughs> so um, I do Ooh. not Claypool think that he's shots. going to help the Bears at all. And I think it helps the Steelers because – I think I read a fact on Twitter that was talking about the Steelers have not had a before like 15 pick in the draft in like the last 15 years. Mm -hmm. um, getting another pick is huge for them, especially they need an O lineman big time, and I think they'll go after O lineman in the draft. Yeah, yeah, Kenny Pickett's been struggling to get protection, just yeah. struggling in general. Yeah. But we'll get into that. We'll yeah. get into that. We'll, we'll, <laughs> we, have that we, got a, we got a few things on our kicking our coverage. We have a but lot of things to talk I, about. I think I think Claypool will be able to help a little bit. I mean. It's better than Nikhil Harry and Bayless Jones. You're so. not wrong. It, <laughs> he's not he's like, a year younger yeah. than Bayless Jones, by the way. It's not like he won't be. He won't be the worst on that team. Yeah. But compared to the rest of the NFL, yeah. as a whole, I think I think he has one touchdown this year, if I'm not mistaken. He is not. 
Maybe being number one guy, maybe he'll be very good for the Bears. Maybe the he Bears was, upgrade by default. Yeah, he was, he was he was the <laughs> yeah. third option. He was the third option on the Steelers. So this, yeah. to get a second round pick, which is what they originally drafted him for, is, is pretty yeah. good. That's good return on your investment. Yeah. Uh, just to kind of wrap up the, the trade down because we do have games and then we have mm-hmm. we have a lot of stuff to talk about. Calvin Ridley going to the Jacksonville Jaguars. I think the statement Big of that win. is Big that win for the, Jags. the Jacksonville Jaguars, they're saying, you know what, we know what's been going on with Trevor Lawrence. We're continuing to believe in him. That's a big investment. That's a big time receiver yeah. when he's not gambling on your team. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's I think Jacksonville, they're, that's their statement. They're saying, hey, yeah. we still believe in Trevor, I, which will be part of my. Yeah. <laughs> I, I want to say uh, the game he got in trouble for gambling was betting on the Falcons to beat the Jags. So it's kind of poetic, <laughs> you know, the way that. Full um, circle. Yeah, the, it, his his career has kind of come full circle. Yeah. And to get him for only a s- maximum of a second and a fifth, because I believe the second is conditional on him getting a long-term deal there. Correct. Yeah. That is correct. I yeah. saw that, yes. Uh, so kind of a steal for, for a very, very good receiver for yeah. Jacksonville. And Atlanta gets some draft capital at best, a yeah. team that's yeah. improving and defying all odds this year. First mm-hmm. place in the NFC South. Who would have thought? Yeah. <laughs> but um, like Grayson was saying, to kind of wrap up the deadline, there were a lot of deals today, but Jeff Wilson goes to the Dolphins for a fifth, so they get rid of Chase Edmonds, bring in Jeff Wilson. Just another San Francisco running back. Yeah, yeah I mean, right. you know, Kyle Shanahan. Shanahan. <laughs> just just loan him out. But, <laughs> Kyle um, Shanahan Jr. Zach Moss and Naheem Hines switch teams, so, you know, I, I think it's a good deal for the Bills there. Yeah. Um, get a pretty solid backup running back. They have James Cook as well, along yeah. with Devin Singletary, but um, Brandon Cooks did not get traded. Along yeah. with Cam Akers, which was a, very shocking. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Cam Akers did not get traded as well. So that was very shocking to see because he is definitely not happy with L.A. Uh, yeah. No. So we'll see what happens in L.A. Um, I did want to mention one trade, though. Okay. That's T.J. Hawkinson going to the Vikings. That's, That's right. right. That's right. We got to mention it. That six and one Vikings just got an all-pro tight end. I think they are, they are going to be good. Hey, yeah. Minnesota, man, they're – They've won five one-possession games this year, so they're definitely proving uh, to anyone that's doubting the Vikings this year. They're yeah. winning these games where they, her cousin's got to step up, this team's got to step up. O'Connell has another weapon to kind of work this offense in. Yeah. Justin Jefferson, Dalvin Cook, Adam Thielen, Hawkinson, Kirk Cousins has got yeah. a plethora he's, of weapons. He's, he's got a ton of weapons. weapons. And Irv Smith got injured too, and he's yeah. out for a while. So, so they, they, they saw a need, and they capitalized on it immediately. That's a good sign for this, yeah. this program. And, and yeah. Pretty solid, and it wasn't too much. Um, it was a lot of pick swaps involved, and uh, it turned out to not be in. I, I think it was an okay price for him. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like Grayson said, we got a few games to get to. Um, I guess we'll start with the Monday night game. The Bengals lose big to the Browns. Um, it was not particularly close. Uh, you see what what this Bengals team is like without Jamar Chase, uh, without a lot of. Of, of defensive backs as well. Chidobi Awuzie is might be out for the year now. Yeah. Um, you had Trey Flowers go out with an injury. Uh, they they had to rely on like Dax Hill, their first round pick, who's a safety to play outside corner on Amari Cooper, which that's not a good combination. Yeah, Never that, good. that isn't always going to uh, turn out well. Um, it's it it was it was not fun as a Bengals fan, but. <laughs> Um, I still think that the Bengals have some issues with that offensive line. And you saw the Browns get pressure on them early. And on the flip side of the ball, Nick Chubb was able to kind of do what he does. And the, the Browns needed this win. They're 2-5. and five. They're kind of not out of it yet, but in a tough AFC, going 2-6 and six is a death sentence. Yeah. We, we've been saying we, they just need to wait for Deshaun Watson to get back, kind of be in the hunt, and hopefully get some magic out of him. But, um, yeah, this Bengals team has got to have a lot to figure out, especially in the division where the Ravens, are improving and the Browns are kind of creeping up. They just kind of kind of stay on pace. I think the turning point of the whole game was McPherson missing that field goal. Yeah. yeah. I think that hurt. And then I think it was 39, I think I wrote it, 39 in the fourth quarter with 10 minutes left. Amari Cooper, 53 yard reception. Yeah. It was, Amari Cooper went off. Yeah. And, and like, like Grayson said, Nick Chubb went crazy. And Kareem Hunt, who was also maybe going to get traded, traded. Yeah. Uh, he, you know, had plenty of touches so it, yeah. it looks like he's probably happy in Cleveland but um, yeah Miles Garrett is scary he was going at Jonah Williams all night Jonah Williams could not hang with him um, and yeah this this team I, I it's basically the exact opposite of what happened last year last year the Bengals were super healthy they had a lot of you know lucky bounces I think yeah. to, to you know not only get all the way to the Super Bowl through the playoffs but um, even get to the playoffs in the first place. But um, this year, you know, you got injuries going on. You've got 
you had the whole Jesse Bates situation, which you know ended up working itself out. But right. Um, just a lot of stuff going wrong for the Bengals right now. Yeah. Uh, Jamar Chase, to me, it's he's. This isn't like a knock against Joe Burrow at all. But when you get so used to having like, hey, we need to play Jamar Chase. Gonna, it's like when you break your arm and you go to open like the car door and you're like, wait a minute, I can't do that. You have to go with your left hand. It's a little awkward at first, but when you start to get used to it, it kind of becomes normal. I think when Jamar, when T Higgins and Joe Burrow, they kind of start to figure things out. They're gonna be like, hey, we can't just give Jamar Chase a 15 yard yeah. slant. He's gonna I take it to the house. We gotta kind of reinvent ourselves in a way. This is. Not a team that's going to fall apart just because Jamar Chase is out. I believe yeah. in T. Higgins, Boyd, Hayden Hurst. This is a good team. And also, do you know that Joe Burrow has not won a game against Cleveland? Yeah, I, I saw that stat. <laughs> he is, the Browns own him. Mental hurdle? Apparently. The Browns are going to be scary when Deshaun gets there. That's all I want to say. They, yeah. They are going to be good. Yeah, they, 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 they'll be pretty decent. That <laughs> offense will be a little scary. Um, but as we transition, ugh, transition, uh, to probably the most exciting game this weekend. Who would have sure. thought? The Falcons <laughs> uh, beat the Panthers 37 to 34 in an absolute barn burner. Um, DJ Moore. Moore, I mean, you know, a, a wave of emotions. You know, uh, PJ Walker has the longest completed pass in like the Super Bowl era. It's like the longest that was air yard. insane. That was a great throw. Not many people are talking about it. Throw throw that and once. it was on the run. To your left, yep. and he's throwing like it was just insane. He like contorted Crazy. his body and just. Ch- it was like that. Um, not to mention, it was like when uh, I'm trying to figure out who it was. I think it was Kate Plum that had that kind of throw to Bo Collins, yes. where he just like, like contorts his whole body, yep. kind of yep. like wow. Yeah, but he completes that hail mary to DJ Moore. They tie the game up. DJ Moore takes off his helmet, <laughs> uh, unfortunately, and gets an unsportsmanlike penalty. Eddie Pinheiro misses the extra point. Who would, uh, I, were you guys sitting there when that penalty happened and it's like a, like it's just a super long PAT and you're like, there's no way he makes this. Yeah, and it, it, just, it looked pretty far, so. Pinero was like think, shaking in his boots. Do you think it really should have been a penalty, though? Like, <sighs> after looking at it. You can't take your helmet off. I yeah, guess. but with like the rules, like obviously I'm big on Twitter, so reading over Twitter, it was like the rules says in the field of play, he was on the boundary line. He was on the out of bounds line. Interesting. So they said technically it should not have been thrown a penalty. That's just, just saying. Yeah. This is yeah. Darian's two I'm, cents right here. Yeah, yeah, I don't know it should have been a penalty, oh. but it's all right. It's all right. I'm, 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 I'm under the impression that you know you should let players celebrate. So, yeah, it's in the rule book that you can't take a helmet off. Yep. Maybe what you're saying, you know, maybe they shouldn't have flagged it, but. Yeah. Also, what happened with A.J. Brown, when he's pointing at the, the Steelers defenders, <laughs> I love that. That, you was, know. that was one of those like things where A.J. Brown was almost helping the Steelers say, hey, Mike Tomlin, this guy can't guard me, and this guy can't <laughs> guard me. Mika can't guard me, but, um, you know, I'm, 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 I like, I like when the players are great. I enjoy it. I, um, I think when there's such a big moment like that, you kind of have just let things slide. Yeah, it's just yeah. a wave of emotion. Like, if it's like the first touchdown and he throws his helmet off, it's like, all right, that really. But when it's, 30, when it's 28 to 34 for the division, first place, and you make that kind of catch and double coverage, yeah. let him throw his helmet off as long as he's not hitting anybody. Yeah. But um, I was also going to say, I think it's good for the Panthers in the long run. Oh, low yeah. Key. Like, the Panthers, you know, if they had won this game, they would have been atop the division. So the Falcons are now atop the division, which is a whole other conversation. Yeah. But uh, I think, you know, they, they, I feel like it was a mental win for them. Uh, even though they did not win the game. Moral, moral victory. Moral victory uh, is, is a better word to, to, to describe that. But they're you know one game closer to the first overall pick. They can draft a quarterback. Or maybe even keep P.J. Walker at this I, point. I was, about to, say, I was I just say, about to ask you guys. I was about to say, I don't think that they need – I think they need to get rid of uh, one of their other quarterbacks who are not so good. Who might that be? Um, <laughs> Literally all of them. <laughs> no, <laughs> they have so many. Does it rhyme with Laker hate? <laughs> <laughs> I think – Baker, he ooh. he is rough. He will never. I don't. If he ever starts with an NFL team, they are. I think they should let PJ just ride out the rest of the season. And if you ha- if you think I you agree. have something, then draft like a high skill position player. But if yeah. you don't, no big deal. Well, they made it like Houston with David Davis Mills. Yeah, and just be like, like hey, let's just see, yeah, what, let's happens. see what happens. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, Carolina is as they're fine. I, I think they got some good vibes since they fired um, since they fired Matt Rule. So yeah, that may have been the worst hire in NFL history, but. Yeah, maybe him. <laughs> maybe maybe Urban. Or Urban Meyer. Urban My Meyer. Fault. Yeah. I forgot about Urban. No, no, no. You're good. Uh, <laughs> Ur- we shall never forget. Matt Rule is not a good hire. No. So, no. Um, the they got to stop with the college guys. Honestly, yeah. they do. Well, so. not only that, he had one good season in college. He didn't even yeah. coach for like ten years. Like Pete Carroll, understandable. I mean, 
You yeah. know, he proved himself as a coach. Pete Carroll's USC team was yeah. pretty much an NFL team. Yeah, that point. <laughs> that's true. It is true, too. But Patrick, Falcons first place in the NFC South where we got Brady who's elsewhere. We have the Panthers who are just kind of they're in a weird spot. And the Saints, they could creep up and still win this division, but they still are too inconsistent for me to go, yeah, I put this team in first place. So that's yeah. that's my two cents on I, Atlanta. Falcons Falcons are a frisky team. The, frisky. I, th I think they'll probably be a playoff team based on how bad this NFC is. Yeah. But um, they could they could they could get a home playoff game and like they, let's say they play the Cowboys, they could catch them on a bad day and maybe potentially get eviscerated potentially. by Philadelphia in the second round. <laughs> they they got to work out this secondary though. This secondary is yeah. bad, just especially injury. without AJ Terrell. It's, yeah. it's, I think they traded for a Chiefs corner um, as I was driving in, but we'll see how much that helps in the long run. That's mm -hmm. their that's their glaring weakness. Kyle Pitts had. Nine targets. So. Yeah, so they got to get him and Drake London involved as well. About time to give him the ball. <laughs> but um, we can transition. Sunday night football. Sunday night football. The Bills beat the Packers only by 10. This game was shippy. Like, they were chirping at each yeah. other the entire Quay Walker, night. Quay Walker, if you did not see, got kicked out of the game for pushing some personnel guy. I don't yeah, even know who it was. And they're like, oh, <laughs> like, don't do that. I, I don't know what would have been said to him for him to push him so hard, but... Yes. I think they're just protecting the coach in that, in that instance. Yeah, there's no out. telling what was said. Yeah, but, but Bills best team in the league is that. As of right know. now, it's the Chiefs, Bills, and the Eagles that are yeah. separated. Same three, same three. The Eagles are teams. the best team in the NFL. I, I mean, I would, I would love to. I wish the Bills and the Eagles played each other, and I wish it was in Philly. Just because. Super, <laughs> Super, Super Bowl. Super Bowl. Super Bowl. Yeah, the Super Bowl. Maybe. I think the Eagles are just so good. Nah, I don't. I don't see no one beating them right now. <laughs> they, they, they also have the easiest remaining schedule. They can go undefeated. So if you look at it, there is no team on there that I think really challenges them, except for maybe like the Cowboys. But you imagine like three years ago and like Jalen Hurts was getting in the draft. And you're like, let me tell you this. When Jalen Hurts is in year three in the NFL, he's going to lead an undefeated Eagles team in 2022. You'd be like, what? I, All right. I mean, yeah, I don't know how many people would have seen that coming, but I've always kind of liked Jalen. I Hurts. love Jalen. I, I think he's a he's a very very good teammate, very good leader. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's that classic video of him squatting at Oklahoma that everybody's just so hyped for. He doesn't skip leg day. It's simply that <laughs> simple. <simply it. laughs> he does not, indeed. But um, yeah, the Bills are good. Josh Allen and Stephon Diggs are very good. They're uh, automatic, to say the least. Gabe Davis screwed me over in fantasy. You want to know that? Uh, really, man. Two two catches all night when I needed just like a little bit more. But that, um, that's. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's <laughs> tough. A lot of bad beats in fantasy this week, but the Packers, they looked better. I mean, Aaron, Aaron Rodgers was trusting Dobbs, which How was good was to see. Uh, I mean, it's been pretty low this, this season, <laughs> but they, Aaron Jones looked good. He, he, Aaron Rodgers seems to be trusting Romeo Dobbs a little bit more. Um, he seems more like engaged when they're three and five instead of them when they're like atop the NFC. He just seems like this year he's kind of like, well, I financially committed. I might as well be kind of all in this, and it's just weird to see. But he has no one to throw to. No, he does not. I mean, and Christian Watson went down early in the game. Yeah. They just had to go pick up a receiver in the draft. Now I, I still, con I'm still convinced. Once Odell, Odell heals up, oh. if they're in the race, he, might, they might go. He, snag he in. could go there. Yeah, but you know, Odell's going to be playing earliest, like December. And are the Packers even going to make the playoffs right now? They're three and five. I, so, I mean, they probably will. I like, know Devin go for another ring or a bag. Though. Yeah. Which one are you going to go after? Yeah. Yeah, that's that's very true. Um, yeah, not much else. This, this game didn't know. have really – it was kind of like it went as expected. I, I, I felt – yeah, I felt like the Bills, even though they threw two late picks, it kind of felt like they were always in control of this game. Yeah. yeah. I never felt like they were really, you know, the Packers were ever forced in the issue. It was more just Buffalo doing what they do. Yeah. So, Bills are good. Packers are mediocre. I'll tell you who's not good. Who is not good, Darian? The Rams. Oh. <laughs> this is very true. My Super Bowl pick is not looking very good. I remember we had our, Darian, we had our first episode before the season, and we had our predictions, and I said it would be the Bills and the Rams. Mm -hmm. And he had the Bills and the Eagles. Guess who's winning that good one? I, I, I had the Ravens and the Eagles. Oh, I you believe. did? But oh, I think still not looking too bad. No. The Ravens I mean, could still win the Super Bowl. If Lamar Jackson finds out how not to chuck a football game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I mean, he's 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 got to get a few weapons. I, yeah, I think he does. As well. yeah, I so the San Francisco CMCs beat the Rams 31-14. <laughs> uh, Chris McCaffrey can really, truly do it all. He can throw. He can he run. He can do everything. He can, he can pass. He can catch, catch balls. He can do 
pretty much whatever you ask them to do. They really said, hey, we got to make sure everyone knows we got we got CMC for yeah. a reason. So like, <laughs> just go do everything, man. It fits into Shanahan's model so well, though. Oh, yeah. Loves running backs, and now he got the one that can pass the ball, too. I mean, dude is going to go. He's a perfect fit for the 49ers. And Debo Samuel's happy, too, because he's going to have to run the football yeah. as much. <laughs> yeah. 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 He, I mean, that was the first time since, I believe, 2005 that somebody has thrown past mm -hmm. and caught a touchdown. Yeah. I believe it was LaDainian Tomlinson. Yeah. So, not not um, that company to be in. Yeah, he is He is very, very good in this offense. And I'm excited to see what him fully knowing the playbook uh, looks like, plus Debo coming back. You know, plus you get Kittle, plus you get Ayuk. Ayak, as I like to call him. Ayak, that's, <laughs> uh, that's clever. But, um, yeah, this Rams team, ugh. They just don't look like... I think Stafford, they can't run the ball as well. Stafford's kind of just, it just feels like they, they hit like this peak, and now that they finally sold their soul for the Super Bowl, they just kind of, the pieces are falling apart. Mm -hmm. And it's just kind of the natural de natural regression. Mm -hmm. and it's just going out. Just because they're not in the Super Bowl, they're, I gotta find my words right. Just because they're in the Super Bowl last year, it was like they could only go downhill from here, and they're just going as fast as they can down that hill. Yeah. And so, they're probably gonna make the playoffs, they'll probably figure it out if I had to guess, just because they have so much talent on this team. I don't know. It just it's doesn't. Cooper cupped out for a long time. They yeah. Be, they will not yeah. be. Scratching. And his, my team name in fantasy is Championship Cup. Mm. He oh. is my starting mm. receiver. I need him to come back. Cooper Cup, please come back. I am begging you. <laughs> yeah. And go off again, please. I need for you to go off for those two touchdowns a game. How to donate an ankle. Yeah. I mean, I will do anything for you to come back. I cannot lose this league. Yes. Yeah, but we want to do some some quick acknowledgments real quick this of some our, just some great uh, performances from players this week. You got, of course, Christian McCaffrey we were talking about. Uh, Derrick Henry got, uh, you know, another two touchdowns, another over 200 <laughs> yards, rushing yards against the Texans. He owns the Texans now. I'm pretty sure he's he's got to have at least a part of that franchise. He's um, gonna have a he, Wikipedia page. It's like <laughs> the Houston Texans owned by Derrick Henry. Yeah, uh, but AJ Brown also had a great game. Fantastic game. Wow. Um, some some very creative celebrations too, <laughs> if I might add. Yeah. Um, Alvin Kamara three total touchdowns. He he looked good. The mm. the Saints shut out the Raiders. Who Raiders look not very good. McDaniel's. Uh, why do you think that? Like why do you think the Raiders are struggling right now? I, th I think McDaniels is just not a very he, good head coach. He, he doesn't know how to get his best players involved. I mean, Matt Collins is doing great, but he's Matt Collins. You have Devontae Adams. You have Josh right. Jacobs, who's objectively been, been very, very good. But he's not getting his best players the ball yeah. enough, I think. I think like what the Raiders did so well last year, and this was without Devontae Adams, they just kind of made it. They had Deshaun Jackson with a deep threat. They had Hunter Renfro on third down. They kind of designed plays to make it work for those guys. And I haven't yeah. seen – Except for like the Chiefs game where Devontae Adams mm -hmm. or the Texans last week where Devontae has been involved from start to finish. It was like Green Bay made it an emphasis. We got to get him the ball, whether it's in red zone situations, third down. Because Devontae is one of the best receivers in the league. Yeah. You got you to give yeah. him a rock. Yeah. And it's just mm – -hmm. and Derek Carr is also hurt too, I believe. He's got a back injury. Yeah. It's just – And Darren Waller was out too. I'm pretty sure that last game. Yeah. So it's tough for him. But – uh, other other spectacular performances. ETN was very very good. Uh, Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddle have now combined for the most receiving yards in the Super Bowl era through eight games with uh, 1688. That's so ideal. Hill is first in receiving yards. Waddle is fourth. Tough duo. Scary to duo. Um, uh, I, to, I had to get my two cents in there. Ramondre Stevenson is literally the Patriots' offense. 140 <laughs> this total is very yards. True. This is very uh, true. When that's that stinker. We'll get into it in a second though. Yeah, but. Um, now moving on, we're going to outkick our coverage once again, uh, kind of speed run it a little bit uh, so, so we don't go too long on time. But um, we, we always start negative on this, on this segment because we, we want to finish the show with some positivity. So, yeah. Patrick, do you want to start with yours? Um, yeah, uh, I guess this is a negative one, but I'm not saying this is going to happen, but could the Steelers potentially be in play to pull an Arizona Cardinals and draft a quarterback very early in the draft like the Cardinals did back-to-back -back years with first Josh Rosen and then Kyler Murray you know mm. look I know the Steelers have a lot of issues and they probably won't do this but if you have say the you know the first overall pick in the draft and you have a, a can't miss well I, I won't say can't miss quarterback uh, option because I think there's issues with Bryce Young you know CJ Stroud all the prospects but I was never completely sold on Kenny Pickett. And I know yeah. he's a Pittsburgh guy, but if you have the opportunity to draft a quarterback um, 
draft like your choice of quarterback, um, you know, who's keeping you from doing that? It 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 worked for the Cardinals to an extent. I mean, Kyler is when Call of Duty's not out. Yeah, <laughs> he is a fantastic quarterback at times, um, and Josh Rosen was obviously not. Uh, but you know, all I'm saying is I think this could potentially. I think it's an option for him. Um, he he was he's a Pittsburgh guy, but is he Pittsburgh's guy? Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Poetry. Oh. From from Mr. Grayson. Well, <laughs> who do you really think they would go? I mean. Kitty Pickett is like a Big Ben 2.0. I yeah. mean, literally the body style, everything. I think you, in order for him to even get a chance to be good, the offensive line has yeah. to be good. He has to get some more weapons out there. So, personally for me, I don't know who you would really drive. I mean, yeah. CJ Stroud would not fit into that offense, in mm-hmm. my opinion. Okay. And the fact that Najee Harris is not he's, he's, doing what he's supposed to be he's doing. He's Trent Richardson, so too, <laughs> everybody's saying. But Another bowl, yeah, yeah, I understand that completely. Yeah. And I think they probably should draft offensive line yeah. to give Pickett a choice. I'm just saying. You it'd be, be shocked. It'd be, it'd, uh, yeah, I wouldn't be super shocked if yeah. that happened. I wouldn't be shocked, but I've also, Kenny Pickett, I think every game that he's played in has been a playoff contender or better. They've yeah. been literally throwing the gauntlet at him. Like the this Bills, the Eagles. The Buccaneers, to an extent, that's a great defense that he has to go against. I think he got mm-hmm. concussed in that game. Yeah. So I would love to see them play a team that's got a softer defense, just kind of say, hey, let's set the expectations a little bit. Like yeah. Maybe he plays, for example, when they play Houston, he has like a two-touchdown, like no interception kind of game. You're like, okay, maybe there's something in there just because it's been all thrown at him. Yeah. There hasn't really been a I chance agree. for him to breathe okay. a little bit. Yeah, good point. Yeah, but anyways, on to the next one. Okay, this one's going to hurt to say. This one's going to hurt to say. But Trevor Lawrence is inching, inching towards that bus territory. It's, mm. it's, I, I, this is one of those topics where we, this is like what Al kicking our coverage is for. And let me just read it. Like 0-11 again in games where he throws even a single interception, and it's just like that game in London where they're going up 14 nothing, and he throws that interception to like literally just Justin Simmons. I know he made an athletic play, and there's a lot of glimpses where you're like, that's the number one pick right there. And then there's pick glimpses where you're like, what is he doing? Yeah. And. I think he's got the highest touchdown, inter- the lowest touchdown interception ratio in terms of like, like that kind of thing out of all number one draft picks. It is not been pretty so far, and I, I don't know how long that leash of oh we had Urban Meyer his first year, give him time is going to last. But mm-hmm. I think Jacksonville is also a franchise that is willing to be patient enough, maybe wait another year. And this Calvin Ridley trade, mm-hmm. I was typing this up beforehand, <laughs> and then I came over here, but. This is one of those ones where I'm praying to the Lord himself that I hope I'm wrong because I love Trevor Lawrence. I want him to be that Peyton Manning like that we've been hyped up to be. But yeah. it's in the 21, 2021 class as a whole has not been looking pretty for the first two years, with the exception of the Mac Jones playoff run last year. But still, we'll yeah, talk about this. But yeah, um, still I don't hurt. know. <laughs> I, I think if he can improve his red zone efficiency, yeah, I think he's. I think. At least right now, he's a solid starter in this league, yeah, I think. Yeah, I would agree. Um, so. I, I think this, it may just because they're losing, and I'm kind of just like, hi, I'm building that negativity. And this is yeah. overreactions. We, we do this for yeah. a reason. The Jaguars have done the same formula for like four straight games. Trevor mm-hmm. Lawrence drives them down the field. They score. They're up like one possession. The defense gives it up. And then Lawrence just has too little time to make it happen. It's happened like four straight times. So maybe I'm overreacting a little bit. I'm not giving them enough time, but. That's what the segment this is. This was for. So. Um, Darian, do you have any takes for us? Okay, so I'm big on college football. Okay. Just so you know. Okay. okay. And I just want everybody to know, and I can't wait to see your reactions. LSU beat Alabama this week. Oh. And just to let everybody know. Oh, okay. I, get a, get a, I did. The because desk. they're playing in Death Valley. Okay. Okay. Maybe not the real one, but yeah, they're playing in it. Not the real one, but. Uh-huh. And Let's they're see. 12 and a half point underdogs. They just showed Ole Miss a couple weeks ago what they're okay. about. Okay. And I think that LSU is going to run the table, maybe the SEC championship game. Wow. Wow. Okay. That Darian's is a bringing bold a new take. dimension to outkicking yeah. our coverage. We're going 4D Let's. here. Uh, <laughs> That's what good Yeah, that is, that is something. Um, we, don't, we, we haven't been talking too much college football this yeah. year, but that's. That's pretty good. Uh, that is a solid, solid take. Uh, why do you think LSU is going to – I just think bes- LSU besides is Death Valley. trending up right now. Okay. I think Brian Kelly got these guys believing again. Like, at the beginning of the year, you could tell glimpses of where Jaden Daniel, he was just like, I don't, I don't know what to do. Mm-hmm. I think he's finally found out where he wants to be, where the team wants to be. Okay. Their quarterback is really good. 
they're finally after Tennessee. I think it kind of really woke them up. It was like, and I will say they will face Tennessee in the SEC championship game. Yeah, that would be a okay. so. Um, okay, that could be an interesting rematch. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think it'd be very interesting. I think there's a lot of there, there's a lot of hype towards this game just because of what we saw against Alabama and Tennessee with that defense. Yeah. LSU can be explosive on offense, and Alabama yes. has been susceptible to these big these big plays with these quarterbacks that can move outside the pocket, extend plays, and make those throws. Yeah. So I'd love to see it. It would it, like be take. fantastic <laughs> for us here at Clemson if that yeah. happened. It would also settle a lot of chaos within the playoff. Yeah. And it would take yeah. Alabama straight out of the conversation. Yeah. But I, I love it. I First love rankings the rankings come out tonight. Yeah, they do. That's, also That's why I had, to, I had to point that out. Oh, I also want to point out one more thing. Oh, we got it. Not going to talk about, you know, Clemson for too long. But I think Georgia losing to Tennessee this week, I think it's going to bump them out. I don't think Georgia's just going to lose. I think Georgia's going to get dominated. Okay. okay. Uh, watching how they play Missouri, I think Josh Hoople got the mindset. And he's going to be ready to go. So I do think Georgia's going to be out of it. But I think tonight what I'm going to watch the most is resume versus the eye test. Mm-hmm. We're going to see really what a college football playoff are thinking. And I think Oregon is going to make the college football playoff. Okay. There's a – there's, there's a lot of good teams in the playoffs yeah, this year. Yeah. I will give you that. And Oregon. Sorry to hop on a cut to train. No, you're fine. No, but we love it. Oregon's going to need we love it. Georgia to win because that's their that one loss. Yeah, is if that Georgia is true. drops to Tennessee, I think Oregon subsequently misses out in the playoffs yeah. because of that. They need but they're Georgia a totally to be different team now. Right. So I, I'm not agreeing with Bo Nets are going to beat them if you replay right now. But that 49-3 will not happen right it's now. It's the only reason that the Ohio State missed the playoffs in 2018 when Alabama snuck yeah. in as the four seed is because that second loss that Ohio State had, they had a better resume. They were a yeah. Power 5 champion. But that 30-point loss to Iowa, a really mediocre Iowa team yeah. that year, it just stuck in this, the committee's minds. Yeah. And I think Oregon needs Georgia to stay perfect. They so do. they can say, I hey, agree. we lost to the SEC champion, and then say, hey, put, we can put us in there. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, I kind of think that's a good place to stop, low key. I think so too. <laughs> yeah, I, so too. I love the boldness of these takes, Darian. I so Darian. we're gonna bookmark. We're gonna we're gonna put a little little marker on this on this video. Please do. We'll revisit it uh, next week. Hopefully, uh, LSU Brian Kelly do not let me down because I just made a very bold take. Yeah, um, it, it could very easily come back. <laughs> it could very could, easily Bama lose could win by, by forty. 30. I would say Mississippi State did not get be as bad as they should have. They really they played a similar style. They should not have lost 30 to 6. Yeah. So, LSU, please come through for me. <laughs> so I'm begging. You heard of Brian Kelly. Darian, <laughs> Darian is asking we, you. Yeah, Darian needs it. But um, it's a good place. That's a good yeah, old we'll, spot to we'll, stop. We'll save, we'll save uh, a few other takes for potentially next week. But rainy day. Um, that's going to do it for this episode of The Cover 2. Darian, uh, what, do you have anything you would like to shout out? Any Any... What? last words uh, I just say thank you all you know it was fun um, it was awesome but yeah I just praying on LSU right now <laughs> the 12 and a, at least cover like yeah. don't get beat by more than 12 and a half all right I do have something uh, I, I you guys can see the shirt this is not Purdue that is this Purdue. is my alma mater Pinewood uh, Pinewood <laughs> Perrier School hailing from Somerville South Carolina is playing in their first home playoff game since my sophomore year of high school I just want to wish them luck against the first Baptist Hurricanes good luck to coach Myers and the crew yeah well Good luck. Good luck. Uh, with, <laughs> with, with final, good luck, all high school uh, football yeah. teams. But yeah, that's going to do it for this episode of the Cover Two. We want to thank Zach for doing everything in the back. King Zach, um, <laughs> literally the goat. We are we are almost completely set up here with this new setup. Uh, it might look a little bit different, but we're excited for that. We want to thank you all for tuning in. Uh, thank Tiger Vision as always. And yeah, that's going to do this. Y'all have a good one. <laughs>